I'm designing an ultra lightweight bipedal robot. It's lighter, faster, stronger given its weight, and more efficient than this, 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 and especially this. That can't possibly be true. Uh. <laughs> its novel actuators are a big part of why this robot outperforms its competition in so many metrics. I'd like to share how its quasi-direct actuators work, and the design decisions that led to it accelerating most, if not all, comparable actuators in the world. By the end of the video, when I show off the quasi-direct actuator's performance in the biped, you'll understand exactly what you're looking at and how you'd be able to design one yourself. So to start off, a quasi-direct actuator is simply a motor connected to a torque-increasing reduction stage, while still behaving like a direct drive actuator. And having these properties means back drivability for sensing external forces, low inertia, efficiency, and impact resistance. The first step in designing a quasi-direct actuator is picking a driving method. First of all, and second of all, we're left with two options in this small form factor, brushed and brushless PMSMs. Torque to weight is what we want for a lightweight robot that maximizes payload. This eliminates these brushed motors because of their high resistance brushes and low torque constant. To pick a brushless motor, we need to consider that as the diameter of a brushless motor increases, the weight and magnetic shear area increases approximately linearly when we assume a thin stator and rotor. But the forces generated by the stator and rotor originates further from the rotation axis, which generates a larger torque. In other words, we need a brushless outrunner with a large diameter, kind of like this one. But even with a brushless motor optimized for torque to weight, it's still nowhere near strong enough to use as a direct drive actuator in a robot. We need something to multiply its torque output. To increase a motor's torque, a speed reduction is necessary. So we want a high torque quasi-direct output, and this is what will constrain what type of reducer we'll pick. I've tested quite a few different types of reduction methods for this and other projects. I found some of my old prototypes, and I'll briefly go over them. Compound planetary gearboxes, you can fit a big motor in it, but it's noisy, not backdrivable, and inefficient. Cycloidal gearboxes, compound or not, they are heavy and complicated, not very backdrivable. Strain wave gearboxes are a classic of robotics, but they have very high inertia and are not very efficient. Worm drive, not backdrivable at all, nor efficient. This one, yeah, don't ask me about this one. Gravity compensation mechanisms are at times dangerous and very situational. Belt and cable mechanisms can be very, very complicated to design for appropriate assembly and tensioning, but otherwise they're pretty decent. Which finally leads me to this 5 to 1 planetary gear set. This is what I'm using as my fidget spinner. Jokes aside, this is what I'm actually using. These three parts make up the entire gear set of the actuator. It's an incredibly light two stage gear set with a pretty odd reduction ratio of around 21.3. This reduction ratio strikes a balance between its torque multiplication and being a quasi-direct actuator with high compliance and efficiency. Herringbone teeth were chosen for load transmission, quietness, and self-alignment properties through a lightweight structural needle bearing assembly, which is finally all constrained by the housing. Overall, the actuator only has eight 3D printed parts, making it very easy to assemble with less than two grams of waste material. Its elongated actuator shape is very efficient in minimizing the total weight of a robot by being a structural component. Dual-sided mounting also helps with mechanical integration. The output of this actuator has a large radius and a small radius mount option. This is where the mounted loads and off-axis moments are supported by a four-point contact bearing. Speaking about loading the actuator, let's move on to the part you've probably been waiting for, performance. As mentioned previously, the actuators are highly backdrivable, so it's able to sense external forces, have low inertia, efficiency, and impact resistance. It's also very high speed and has a high control bandwidth. The torque it can produce is amongst the highest in the industry for a quasi-direct actuator under a kilo which is amazing considering it outperforms the ones using steel. So I hope this video gave you an idea of what goes into making an actuator like this. Um, if you want to make one yourself, or if you want to simply learn more, please go to my website.